Hey, I'm Dutch J, and this is the first video in a series of six videos that will be a beginner's tutorial to speedrunning Super Mario Sunshine. The way that these videos will work is pretty straightforward. Most of them is just going to be footage of gameplay showing strategies that you should be able to do as a beginner. Whenever something requires additional explanation, I will provide it to you guys by talking to you, just like I am right now. This series will teach you everything that you need to know in order to start speedrunning the any% percent category. The rules are simple. The goal of any% percent is to beat Bowser as fast as possible. In order to be allowed to submit your times to the leaderboards, you need to play the game on a disc on an official Nintendo hardware, so a Nintendo GameCube or a Nintendo Wii. And if your time is better than 1 hour and 25 minutes, your submission will require video evidence. As some of you may know, there's actually three different versions of Super Mario Sunshine. There's the Japanese version, the American version, and the European, or PAL version. Um, if you're a beginner, it really doesn't matter which version you have. The time difference between the versions is less than 15 seconds between all three of them. So unless you're going for very good times, it's pretty much irrelevant which version you are playing on, so don't worry about it. Something that matters a lot more is which console you're playing on. The GameCube has slower loads than the Wii, so it's faster to be playing on a Wii. The exact difference has never been timed, but it's somewhere between the range of half a minute to a minute. One thing that is noteworthy about version differences is that on the PAL version, there is actually five different languages. And uh, for speedruns, the Italian language is the fastest one. So if you're playing on PAL, you want to go into the options menu by walking right on the file select screen, and then set your language to Italian. A speedrun of Super Mario Sunshine officially starts on file select. And file select means hitting a block and then pressing yes when the game asks you if you want to continue. The moment you press A to select yes is when the run starts. Since you're going to be seeing these cutscenes enough when you actually play the game, we're going to skip them for now. Instructions complete. Proceed. Getting Shadow Mario quickly here can be a little tricky. If you're not so confident in your aim, then pause for a second and set it up before walking forward. This is worth doing because if you don't get Shadow Mario before the end of the shadow here, he will take a detour which loses about 10 seconds. You want to stick around in this area because Shadow Mario will stop and he won't start moving again unless you're close.
He will stop in front of the statue here as well, and you need to get very close to him. As you're doing so, you can try spam spraying the statue in order to get early M, which saves a very small amount of time. The game allows you to complete Episode 2 of Bianco Hills without completing Episode 1, so while we're entering Episode 1, we're actually completing Episode 2 here. A regular hover slide is faster here, but hovering backwards for a bit makes it a lot easier. Coming up here is Log Jump, which is used in almost every episode of Bianco Hills, so it's important to learn. One tip to make this easier is to start holding R before you slide off of the ledge. If you mess up log jump, you can just do a regular triple jump to get onto the wall. The spider in the lake is in a random position, so you won't always be able to spray and jump on him immediately. You can make him attack Mario by jumping in and out of the water. Then you can simply hover over him and dive onto him and get onto the windmill normally. To get up on top of the windmill, I suggest hanging on this ledge and waiting for the windmill blade to pass in front of Mario. Then you can press B and A in quick succession in order to get a wall kick and you can do four more wall kicks on the windmill without having to touch your control stick. After the last wall kick, you can simply hover up to the top and enter the PD fight. After entering the fight, you'll want to spam spray as you hit the ground in order to clear the goop. Next, stand to PD's side. This will make it so that he never headbutts you. As soon as he opens his mouth, you can start spraying him. I will show three different ways of spraying him throughout this fight. After he falls down, you can hover over him and ground pound as soon as the arrow appears. After Petey's been defeated, you can set up for the shine grab. Get the three shadows of vines that are along the circle to be on the left side of the screen and then look for this set of three dark yellow stones on the ground. If you stand in the middle of them, you'll be in the right spot. Then, as soon as Petey has fully disappeared, you jump and ground pound, and you should grab the shine as soon as you're able to. To re-enter Bianco quickly, as soon as you gain control of Mario, press and hold R and press A. This will make Mario backflip straight into the M. To get a wall kick on the pole, you need to be to the back right side of it. To make this easier, just imagine this line and go behind it and then side flip to the left. At the end of the upcoming Polluted Piranha fight is a trick called Travel Skip. What this is is that we're entering Bianco Hills while the cutscene for unlocking Rico Harbor is playing. This saves about 9 to 10 seconds. This fight is actually made up of two separate fights, each needing three hits on a Polluted Piranha. During the first phase, you want to clean all the goop, because you don't want it to be there later. In order to get Travel Skip, you need to be pretty close to Bianco Hills, so after defeating the first phase, you want to back up and stand in a specific spot. The spot I use is on the back of this 
floorboard that has the thicker line on it on the left side. As soon as you spray for the last hit on the Polluted Piranha, you want to turn around, spray on the ground, and do a water slide to Bianco Hills. Then I suggest hovering into the M so that you enter it as soon as possible, because you do not have a lot of time to make it in. The second PD Piranha fight is quite different from the first, and it's subject to a lot of luck. PD will fly over the village in a random fashion, only stopping when he reaches certain spots. It's only when he stops that you can actually spray him out of the air and score a hit on him. This image shows all the spots where PD can stop, so if you see him approaching one of these spots, you need to start spraying him so that he will fall. This image is linked in the video description. Once PD has landed, the procedure is similar to before, however now you want to stand in front of him, as standing to the side does no longer guarantee that he won't give you a tornado. If he opens his mouth, spray him like before. If he gives you a tornado, move to his side and wait for him to open his mouth and then spray him. You will have to refill your water during this fight at least once, at the latest after the first hit. Luckily, there are several sources of water available in the village. The most readily available source is the blobs. If you jump on a blob while your water is less than half full, it will drop a water bottle which will refill half of your water. If you are near the wall in the village, you can spray the bells to get a 1-up which will completely refill your water. Close to the river on this side of the village is a hover nozzle box. If you pick up the hover nozzle, it will also completely refill your water. If you're close to the river anywhere else in the village, you can just jump in it and refill your water normally. Once you've scored the final hit, you can once again set up for the shine grab. The spot in this level isn't as obvious as it was in Bianco 2, but you can still see where the shine's gonna land based on the grass. I suggest you fool around with it. Once again, as soon as the goop has fully disappeared, do a jump and a ground pound and you should collect the shine immediately.
Next up is the most important trick in the game, Gelato Beach Kip. What Gelato Beach Kip is, is a trick that allows you to collect the Episode 8 Shine inside of Episode 1, meaning you can go straight to Shadow Mario. I did not touch on this before, but the reason that skipping shines like this is a good thing is that the only prerequisite for unlocking the final Bowser fight is to defeat Shadow Mario in every world. To perform the skip, you need a coconut, so the first thing you do when you enter the level is go to this tree and collect a coconut from it. As soon as you get one, take it to the hut where the shine is. The camera angle is the most important thing for this trick. Here's how you set it up. After you've set down the coconut in front of the hut, make sure that the camera is pointing to the left of the shine. Then, jump up against this fence so that Mario ledge grabs it, and press L to center the camera. The camera now has the correct angle, and you need to maintain that angle. The only way you can move sideways and maintain your camera angle is by jumping and then moving left and right in the air. You should do the same for going backwards, you can walk forwards normally. You will need to take the coconut up onto the roof of the hut, and this is the trickiest part to overcome with regards to the camera angle. The two best ways of achieving this are by using a spin jump or a triple jump. Here is what the spin jump looks like, and here is what it looks like with a triple jump. The spin jump is faster, so I recommend it, but if you can't do it consistently without losing your angle, go for the triple jump. When you're on the roof, you'll need to set up your position. You'll want to be in the center of the roof, in line with the shine. As for the height, you want to be standing about on this dark line where you can see Mario standing right now. You can clip with a variety of heights, but I suggest you make a visual cue for yourself so that you can always get the same height. This will make it much easier to be consistent, because your height determines the timing for the hover that's coming up. Now, you want to switch to the hover nozzle, and then press B to drop the coconut, and immediately start holding up. This will cause Mario to start walking against the coconut. If Mario slips to either side of the coconut here, that means your angle was bad, and you'll have to set it up again. At a certain point, you will clip inside the roof, and you will need a well-timed hover in order to stay inside of it. As I mentioned before, the timing for this hover is dependent on how high up you were on the roof, and as such it can vary quite a bit. Now you will need to hover forward to the shine without clipping out of the roof. To do this, you will need to adjust your speed by pressing up and down on the control stick. I suggest briefly tapping down on the control stick immediately after you clip into the roof in order to slow Mario down. After that, you'll have to adjust your speed according to the situation. If you clip out under the roof, you are going too fast, and if you clip out on top of the roof, you are going too slow. Once you are above the shine, you can release hover and drop onto it. Gelato Beach Skip is not easy, so it may take you quite some tries to get it when you first start doing runs. But keep in mind that playing Gelato Beach normally takes at the very least 10 minutes, so as long as you're getting Gelato Beach Skip faster than that, you're still saving time. Re-entering Gelato works the same way as re-entering Bianco. And don't forget to select Shine 7 in the Shine Select here, so you need to scroll left once. This Shadow Mario is similar to the one in the plaza, except you only have limited time to set up your angle. Aim in between these two trees and start walking as soon as Shadow Mario passes Mario.